Stan Jabalisco here from the Nerd Cave, the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. You see my ham radio station right here. You've seen all this stuff before, but the purpose of this video, well, if you've watched my Nerd Cave videos, you have. That uh, particular uh, display up there with the planets, well, actually, that's Saturn and its moons, a montage. Artist conception, courtesy of NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Go to Great Images in NASA. You can download a bunch of images for wallpaper like that. That is a 46-inch display with my ham radio. But what I'd like to show you here, first of all, is this little contraption. Notice that yellow plug on the right there. That yellow, the red cord with the gray cord and the yellow coupling plug. Well, what that is is a heavy-duty extension cord outlet, and that gray cord goes to the uninterruptible power supply for the ham radio. That's right over there. And that uninterruptible power supply has been hacked in a way that I don't necessarily recommend you do unless you really know what you're doing. Automotive batteries uh, replacing the original batteries. There's a bunch of hazards involved with that. I've gotten into that in other videos. My recommendation is don't do it unless you know what you're doing and then don't blame me if you burn your face off. There on the left, to the left of that yellow thing, is uh, what you see a little night light and then another cord. Now that cord goes out to a breaker box or a actually a power strip breaker in the garage. There's no surge uh, suppressor on that breaker strip there is in the uninterruptible power supply, and that protects the... All of this Nerd Cave Electronics, not only the ham radio station, but that computer, which is off right now, and this computer. There's some more great images in NASA wallpaper. The video production computer for instructional videos. All of this Nerd Cave apparatus is on this hacked uninterruptible power supply in case the power fails it gives me a few minutes to hook up the backup generator and that's what this is all about the backup generator comes through that green cord the power comes through that green cord in order to use it with this equipment I must first unplug that gray cord from the red one or the orange one which goes to a a regular utility outlet I must physically unplug that and then plug it into that dark green cord. I remove that little night light and plug it into that dark green cord. The, the, uh, the little uh, power strip out in the garage, I ha it has a breaker on it, I switch that off and then once I plugged it in I switch it on to keep a, keep a surge from taking place when you when you yank a plug from a live outlet or you stick a plug into a live outlet with the apparatus powered up, you can get a current surge, so I don't want that to happen. Kind of defeats the whole purpose. Could uh, crash the computers and things like that. But notice that is complete isolation between the generator, which goes through that dark green cord, the generator power when it's running, and the utility power. There is absolutely no way that I can backfeed any electricity into the utility lines. And that is a crucial point of this video. I've seen a lot of backfeed uh, information about how you can backfeed power into your power panel and all that kind of stuff. And I harped on it in another video, which some people called kind of retarded. I won't deny that. I'm kind of a hokey old mountain bumpkin. I can get a little bit, a little bit, uh, well, not retarded, though. There is the furnace for my whole house. Now, this, uh, of course, has sensitive electronics in it. And it has a fan. needs electricity to run. So, if we have a power failure, I have an arrangement for this. Now, the furnace itself comes through that heavy-duty three-wire cord that you see. That goes to the furnace and that is plugged through a transient suppressor. That's what that little funny shaped white box is, also known as a surge suppressor or less precisely a surge 
protector. Then that power strip right there, that has no surge suppressor in it. But that power strip goes to the utility. The utility uh, electricity up through that cord right there. So the utility power normally, as the situation is right now, no power failure taking place now, I have that furnace plugged in there. Now notice that light bulb, that's not really on. Uh, it isn't on now, I just got a light shining on it so you can see all this clearly. There's another power strip. No surge suppressor in that one either. Now that power strip goes through this cord which goes straight down from it. You can't see that very well, but that goes to the, the uh, generator. That runs to the generator. Now if there's a power failure, what I will do is I will first switch off that uh, power strip, then I will unplug the furnace from that power strip. I will make sure that this power strip is switched off. That's the generator power strip, and the light bulb should be off at that point. Then I will plug that plug, which goes to the furnace, into this outlet right here. Notice complete physical separation between the generator electricity and the utility electricity. There is no possible way that backfeed can occur here. Once that's plugged in, I will switch on this power strip and that light bulb will come on and then the furnace will come on. Again, the furnace has sensitive electronics in it and you do not want to yank up the plug from a live outlet or insert that plug into a live outlet with the unit powered up because it can create a current surge or a transient spike can uh, mess up the electronics and believe me the other night we had a power failure because of a thunderstorm I'm glad I had that transient suppressor in there to protect the furnace electronics uh, because uh, that the surge from the lightning strike that caused the power failure screwed my uh, screwed my television cable box. I had to have it reinitialized by the cable company because it did not have a surge protector on it. And it still doesn't because I watch television even less often than I do my laundry, which is twice a year, whether it needs it or not. Now with that, I'm going to sign off. I'm not going to burden you with a lot of yammering beyond this important and crucial point. Do not backfeed electricity into your main utility circuit, period. If you do have an interconnection, have an isolation switch approved by the National Electrical Code, the Underwriters Laboratories, your electrician, they'll tell you how to do that. It's a double pole, double throw isolation switch, also known as a transfer switch. Never ever assume that you can get away with backfeeding power into the utility because utility electricity can uh, or the generator electricity can get onto the neutral of your uh, electrical line in ways that you couldn't ever imagine until you are charged with involuntary manslaughter for the death of a utility lineman who happened to get electrocuted because of a fault in your system so don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. And if you really want to be clean, you can do your laundry even more often than twice a year. Although to me, that's plenty often enough. <laughs> Stan Jibalisco from the Black Hills of South Dakota. United States of America, retarded country bumpkin, just doesn't want to get convicted of involuntary manslaughter. Signing off for now, so long.